Uh, all right. Hey, team. Welcome to our Thursday night call. It is Thursday, August 13th. I almost said October. I'm trying to rush it. We're going to change things up a bit. So Emily's going to go ahead and start us off for our call. So Emily, go ahead and take it away. I'm going to read from my phone all the stuff I'm supposed to say. Maybe I'll add something special there. All right. So announcements. Here we go. Uh, next Tuesday, it looks like we're going to have a new coach call. So that's on the 18th and 9 p.m. So if you've got people in the sneak peek and you're, you're trying to convince them to join, this is something, you know, spin that we have this call that we'll give them the basics. That'll be, could always be useful. Um, we're going to have another coach sneak peek at the end of the month on the 31st. So we're actually going to have two sneak peeks. We just are finishing this one up and we'll have another one at the end of the month. But don't wait to put people in there. If people are interested, talk to them about the business. Talk to them about how they could sign up. Talk to them about uh, challenge packs versus the $40 fee versus if they want a Chicology. Talk to them about the benefits. Talk about them, how we're not salespeople, but we share. Talk about whatever their objections are. Sign them up. Do not wait until the 31st. If you just happen to have people that go in, great. Or if you've been talking to them and they really just seem hesitant and they need more information, then put them in there. But don't just, like if you have someone today you're talking to, don't wait till, till then to put them in. Sign them up now, right? You, you be in charge of your business. Share with them as much information as you can. If you need more information, go to your upline and they will be sure and happy to tell you information. Or if they ask you something that you're not exactly sure how to answer, go to your upline and they will be able to kind of say, oh, I would say blah, 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 blah. All right, back to my notes. Okay, so we have two more weeks for the month. We need to lock in rank ups. No one's ranked up this month yet. Um, I know a couple of my coaches can do it. Hopefully we'll do it. Uh, so keep inviting, keep pushing. You still got time. Also realize that we have two more weeks for, for oh, the Change Lives Club. It's not Success Club anymore. It's now the Change Lives Club. Change Lives Club. CLC, okay? So we can go through that. So we have people who've changed three people's lives. Well, only one person. Ashley Odenweller, and then people who've changed two people's lives. Megan Edson, Katrina Waters, Brittany Wood. That's, I made that up. No, is that right? Whatever. No, that's I'm very wrong. Mother. It's Change Lives Club is five or more will be Success Club 10 or higher, and then Change Lives oh, Club is three or more. That's where I screwed up. You got it, okay. So <laughs> Ashley's changed five lives, and then three lives have been changed by Brittany, Katrina, and Megan. And then everyone else who's at least helped one person. There's a whole bunch. So I might butcher your name. I'm really sorry. Vicki Bannon, Stephanie Smith, Jennifer Merslock, Katrina Fogarty, Victoria Gray, Debbie Pearson, Danielle Bardsley, Kelsey Nissen, Kelly Costa, Amber S. I'm going with S because I don't really know how to say your last name. Kelly... Rouch, Melissa Wolf, Sarah Berry, Jamie Arena, Ashley Betancourt, Bill Odenweller, Cara, Kelsey Medcalf, Ashley Reba. Then we've had an awesome, congratulations guys, by the way. Hopefully you can text me later and tell me how to say your last name if I screwed up. But we've added 12 new coaches to the team thus far, so we should shoot for the stars. Can we add, okay, we got 12 in 13 days. So we've added one coach a day. Well, we should try to... Let's see if we can add three coaches a day. So that's, I don't know how many days left in the month. So I'm going to do the math for me. <laughs> Let's say like 40 coaches. Stop laughing at me, Ashley. She's laughing at me. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, let's add 40 coaches, whatever. That makes it the math. We'll just go with that. So our goal is to hit 40 coaches by the end of the month. Then um, for those in a team cup, remember that's how we're getting prizes for the Change Lives Club is in the team cup. Um, so make sure you're engaged with your team members, with your sponsor, upline sponsor, whoever's running it. You're t sharing ideas, sharing scripts, whatever's working, what's not working. You're bouncing ideas off each other. Maybe host a five day clean eating group next week. You know, there's still time to advertise that right now and then advertise it again tomorrow and then start see who you can get next week. So. All right. That's all I got. Thanks for listening to me. Do you have the top five coaches? Oh crap. Yeah. Sorry. That was at the bottom. I hadn't scrolled far enough. Oh yeah. Top five coaches. So we got Ashley with 495. That's PV, right? Mm -hmm. Cara with 472. Jamie Arena with 428. Brittany Wood with 367. And Megan Edson with 315. 
Awesome job. Thank you, Em. All right, so let's get to the meat of the call. Bear with me for two seconds because I have to share my screen. Do that. And then I'm going to turn off. Um, Em, go ahead and just put yourself on mute. Wait to put yourself on mute because you have to let me know if you guys can see my screen okay. All right, Emily, can you see that? Yeah. All right, now you can go ahead and mute yourself. All right, guys, so tonight we are talking about social media, and I know we've done this call in the past before, um, but we have so many new coaches, and I feel like this is something I should probably do a refresher on every couple months. So tonight we are doing social media. Lindsay Sessions had a sneak peek of it, and which is why she posted in the team page. So I hope you have your pens, pencils, notebooks ready to go. Take lots of notes. Use the chat bar to ask any questions, and any of the other coaches that are on the call can try to help me answer them. So um, I obviously can't see your faces, but you can even write it in the chat bar. Um, what do you guys think are the top three social media apps that people use? And you can even take yourself off mute real quick and throw out some suggestions of what you think the top three are. And please don't make me look silly by asking and then nobody talking. Facebook. Facebook. Anybody else have any ideas? I can't. Can you see the chat? And I some can't. of them are saying in Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. All right. So... Facebook users between Americans between 18 and 24, 75.6 of them use Facebook, 43.1% of them use Instagram, 32.9% use Snapchat, who would have thought, 23.9% use Twitter, and 17.9% use Pinterest. Also on there was um, Google Plus and LinkedIn, but I really don't consider LinkedIn a social media app, but that's just me. Um, so we're going to start talking about social media. Why? Because you can reach so many more people with social media. It literally lets you reach thousands of people outside of your real life, outside of your warm market. And when I say warm market, I mean people that you already know. Um, it builds your cold market because eventually you're going to run out of people that you know to talk to. If you want to grow your business, you need to be using social media, not should be dabbling in it, not should it suddenly be using it. You need to be using it in at least two avenues. Facebook should always be one of them. And then you need to choose the second avenue. It can be Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, blogging, Pinterest. If you're going to do blogging or YouTube, I would recommend using a third one until you can build up enough following, but you need to be at at least two of them. So if you leave this phone call and you're only using Facebook, then you need to chat with your upline and be like, all right, which one do you think I should dive into? You need to step outside of your comfort zone and get comfortable being uncomfortable because that's exactly what it is with social media. You're putting yourself out there. And until you do that, people aren't going to learn to trust you. They're not going to want to reach out to you. You got to learn to be comfortable being completely uncomfortable and being vulnerable. There are so many people out there that still need our help and you may find them through social media and they may find you. I often hear like, oh, it's so saturated. Like there's too many people on there. Like I'm not going to stick out. Yes, you are. Because most of you guys know out of my 80 so personally sponsored coaches, I only know five of them in real life. I've met every other coach through social media. So if it's so saturated, what brought those 70 plus people to me? They found me through social media. I found them through social media. So it works. I'm proof that it works and that I know what I'm talking about most of the time. Um, social media is going to be the major building block of your business. And if you're only using Facebook, you're seriously injuring your business. So yeah, you need to find another avenue. Let's talk statistics on Facebook. 350 million photos are uploaded daily, 45 billion likes are clicked on daily, and 10 billion messages sent. Pretty sure it's safe to say it's like the only form of communication that a lot of people use nowadays. Even with me, I will send a Facebook message before I send a text message to somebody. It's just out of habit. 1.28 billion users are active on Facebook monthly. Facebook drives 23% of all website traffic. 30% of the population gets its daily news from Facebook. And I'm one of that 30% because I could not tell you the last time I watched news. Like I was like, oh, an earthquake happened. That's cool. I only found out about it because of Facebook. 960 million daily users on Facebook. And Canada, who would have thought, shout out to our Canadian coaches, is the most active on Facebook. That, that, I, that surprised me. And average time spent on Facebook daily is 20 plus minutes. 
just some fun facts for you about Facebook. All right, let's talk about baby steps on Facebook. And I am talking about your pro, uh, main profile page, like your main Facebook. Um, be approachable. Your Facebook picture should be capture you. It needs to show your face. It needs to show your eyes. You should not be wearing a hat. You should not be wearing big old buggy sunglasses because people may not recognize you. If someone is looking for you that found you on Instagram, um, and I see chats happening, if I will check them at the end if a question doesn't get answered if somebody else can't do it for me. Um, so people need to know what's you. So if somebody's coming from Instagram and they're trying to find you and they're like, I think this is her, but she's got a sombrero on. I don't know why I said sombrero is the first hat that came to my mind and sunglasses. Maybe it's her. Maybe it's not. They need to know it's you. Your cover photo should describe exactly who you are and very, very quickly. And I will dive more into cover photos um, as we get further into the slides. Don't post and run. So what I mean by this is don't post a status and then just walk away. You want to be engaging to those that are going to answer your status. So if somebody comments on your status, reply back to them. I'm not saying you have to reply to every single person that posts, but reply to the first four, five, or six people that post. Like their comments on your status. Reply back to them. You need to involve your followers, ask questions, ask polls, be engaging, and they don't have to do anything with fitness. I remember one time I asked like the question, like, what do you describe the end piece of the bread? Do you call it the butt or the end? I had like a hundred and something that replies back to it because it was just a silly question, but it involved my people and it got my page seen more. And your pictures need to be eye-catching and original. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm like looking at my notes and I'm also going over this. But yeah, we'll go more into photos in just a second too. Like I said, you need to be interacted. If you're interactive, if you're not, your posts are going to get seen a lot less. So if you put up a status and no one comments or no one replies to it or no one likes it, guess what? Facebook's not going to show it to all your other friends that pop up on Facebook later. So if somebody, like I said, if somebody comments on it, reply back to them and like their comment, like every single comment. Because when you interact on your same post, Facebook doesn't really count that or they still count that and they're still going to show it in other people's feed. Um, and you have to have activity right away so it'll be continue to, continue to be seen a lot more. Do not use scheduling services. This was a hot topic that we talked about on um, the team page today. The reason why is Facebook will bury your post and they will make sure it's not seen. Facebook doesn't want you using other, um, other web pages and other platforms to post on their website. They want you to be on there yourself. So if you use Hootsuite, Buffer, Sendable, guess what? You can count on your posts not being seen. Um, I know on like pages you can schedule posts, and I know for a fact that they get seen a heck of a lot less than if you post originally. And I know sometimes it's hard for you to post. Set a reminder on your phone. So set a, an alarm clock for like nine, noon, and like seven o'clock at night. And those are the times that you're going to post. Don't use scheduling services. Trust me. Been there, done that. Watch the times that you post um, because certain times are going to get seen more. If you post at two o'clock and you don't see a lot of traction going on your post, don't post at two o'clock anymore. You're probably going to have to play and like study and see what happens with it. But once you figure out what times are being seen more, Make sure that those are the times that you are posting. So for me, I know that my posts usually get seen more around nine o'clock, um, anywhere from noon to one because it's lunchtime and anywhere from like five to seven is when my posts get seen the most. I'm not going to post at 11 o'clock at night because my East coasters aren't going to see it. And then my West coasters may see it. I'm not going to post at midnight because no one's going to see it. So you need to pay attention to what time you are posting. I know it may seem like that's not a big deal, but it really is and clean up your page. I went through and did this the other day. People are going to go and look through all your old pictures. Like they will go like creeping and being like, Oh, look at this person. Like, so I got rid of my photos. If I had a photo of me, like all drunk and sloppy from my college days, I got rid of it because that's not me anymore. I don't care if that picture still floats around. I have no interest in seeing it. So I cleaned up my page. Don't be afraid to go back and delete pictures. Just clean up your page, make sure it looks good because people will come check you out before they sign up to become a coach or before they want to join your team because they're going to want to make sure that the person that they're joining is somebody that they trust and that they feel is somebody they're going to be able to connect with. So clean up your pages. Let's talk pictures. Your pictures should not be 
spammy. We are not in the business of sales. We are in the business of sharing. Do not use photos from Beachbody. Do not use those stock photos. Yeah, they're great. They show other people's before and afters, but people don't care about other people. We are not other companies that may or may not sell saran wrap. And you know what I'm talking about. Um, people want to see you. It is easy to throw up a before and after of somebody else. And people are going to look and be like, well, if they're using a before and after of somebody else, maybe the products really don't work if they can't show me themselves. You need to use your own photos. Do not use stock photos. Do not use photos of the size promo releases. Don't use photos that say, buy me now. Don't use those. Your pictures need to be original. AKA make your own and don't use other people's. If you see someone from the team that you like their photo, ask them before you use them. Chances are you guys are going to have somewhat of mutual friends from either challengers or whatnot. And imagine what it looks like when you see the same picture five, six, seven times in a row. I used to not really care if people use my photo, but now it's kind of like, eh, make your own. So if you're going to steal somebody's photo or borrow it, ask them before you do it. Your photos need to be eye-catching, they need to be simple, and they need to be colorful. Don't use too much text. People will like literally look over it. They're going to be like, I have to read a paragraph to look at that picture? Yeah, no thank you, I'm good. So make sure they're eye-catching, simple, colorful. You're going to learn. You're going to make mistakes. I've been there. I've done that. And you're going to learn from it. So let's talk about photos not to use. For example, the low price of 140 don't ever put prices in your photos. Like, come on, you want to talk to people first because people are going to see the price and be like, yeah, no, I'm good. You got to explain to them the value of it. Again, don't use the stock photo. I'm sure Aaron looks great from Body Beast and winning $500. The only time I've ever used a photo like this is when I won my $500 for winning the Beach Body Challenge. The picture on the right of the P90X Brazil butt lift. Hello, that was mine. See, told you I make mistakes. Like, how salesy is that? Like, what makes that grab people's attention? Absolutely nothing. The 180, that's my picture. I've used it before. It's, again, the price is on there. Don't put prices on your pictures. Um, the no counting calories, 21 days. I mean, it's not horrible, but you should be involved in the picture. You know, it should be more with you, more about you. So these are photos that you don't want to use. Photos you want to use instead. Um, me, I'm hugging my performance line because I was out of chocolate recovery and I thought I was going to die. So that's me talking about how excited I am about it and that I'm in love with it. My picture of the Nike with the performance line. It's eye catching. It's not spammy. It's not salesy. It makes you, it grasps your attention. My picture of zebra shake allergy. I'm not showing a bag of it. I'm not saying share it, waving it in the ear. It's not just a stock photo of it. I'm just in my workout gear, drinking my shake allergy. I love this picture of Brittany. She's got the container. She's got the 21 day fix with her. So she's talking about the 21 day fix. And then the other picture of the Shakeology. I got that from Chelsea Pearson. It's again, not just a bag picture. It's her showing her blender and making it. These are eye catching. They grab people's attention. They're not spammy. They're not salesy. This is what your pictures should look like. Let's talk cover photos. Um, cover photos are the banner that's on the top of your profile picture. They should tell a story of who you are, where you've come from, what you're all about. You literally have probably less than 15 seconds, if even that. You probably have like seven seconds to grab somebody's attention. That's it. And if you don't grab their attention in seven seconds, guess what? They're out of here. They're going to like move on and not come back to your um, profile. You don't want it to be wordy. You don't want it to be Samzy. Spammy, spammy. I can't talk tonight. Spammy, salesy, and two packed. It should be simple. It should ex tell exactly who you are. It can have before and after pictures, family photos, quotes. Do not make the entire cover photo a quote, though, because that doesn't explain who you are. PickMonkey.com is um, a free site that you can use to make your cover photo. So here's some example of some cover photos. You can check out Anita Myron, Meg Wazinski, Janelle Summers, Lindsay Matway, Melanie Mitchell. From our team, Lindsay Sessions has an awesome one. So it is Brittany Wood. I'm fond of my own. Um, but these are examples. Each one tells a story. It shows who they are. It shares their life. So Anita's got her before and after and a picture of her family with her. Leslie has pictures of her with her Shakeology and her workout gear, her family, her kids. It describes who she are. Melanie's is fun and it's eye-catching. These are what cover photos should look like. So that's cover photos. All right, let's talk like pages. 
So again, your like page can have the same exact cover photo as your profile picture, but you want to have an offer on it. So on mine, I have a click banner for more info. So if somebody clicks that photo, it's going to pop up describing me, who I am, and it's going to take them to a link, um, a Google Doc to fill out if they're interested in challenge groups, if they're interested in coaching, to tell me more about them. It's a great way for you, for people to reach out to you without necessarily messaging you or commenting on your um, photo. On like pages, post videos. Videos get seen a heck of a lot more than posts do. And I think it's because they play the minute somebody scrolls by them. So when they play, it's gonna get popped up and it's gonna be seen more. I try to post a video at least four or five times a week. It can be a video of you working out. It can be a video of you talking. I posted a video of me doing size and it's like the most likes I've ever had on a video before. Constantly be inviting your friends and family to your like page. If you are on your mobile app, you can click on invite friends and family. And I literally just go through and I click everybody. I do it once a week because usually if I have a new friend request, they haven't liked my like page yet. So that's a way to boost my likes. Be engaging on your like page. That's how it gets seen more. Like pages are very hard to build, but if you are consistent, my favorite word, it will happen over time. Um, just keep posting on them consistently. Do not post one day and then not post for another week because then people aren't going to see that. You have to post consistently. I post on mine at least two to three times a day. It doesn't have to be fitness all the time. It shouldn't be fitness all the time. It should be pictures of your dog talking about something that happened today, asking a question. Like I post that we booked our vacation today. Just post consistently. Facebook boosts and ads. I will touch a little bit on it. I do want you to refer to the call that Kelsey Medcalf did. It is on our YouTube channel, tinyurl.com slash TFTGF YouTube. It's on my YouTube channel. Just search Ashley Odin while on there. You'll find it. You can pay to uh, boost a post on your Facebook page. Um, make sure it's an engaging post, such as a sneak peek, now hiring challenge group, because that's how you're going to get more interaction. You can also boost to have your like page um, advertised. That means it'll pop up on the side of people's Facebook pages and ask them to click on it. You can also choose a target audience. So I boost my like page daily, and I will choose 21 to 45 years old, females only and that live in Canada and the United States, and then I choose different interests. Um, it's a great way for your like page to grow. You can set your amount. You can set it for a dollar a day, anywhere up to $50 a day. The more you do it, the more likes you're going to get. You can choose your own, um, your own budget, whatever you want it to be. If you are trying to boost a picture, no more than 20% text on your picture. Do not use before and afters. They will both get denied. Um, I personally do not pay to boost ads. I have never had any luck with them. So I just stick to boosting my posts and I generally get a good hit off of boosting certain posts. Again, it's, you know, trial and error. I boosted one post for a sneak peek and I didn't get any responses. And it was because my picture just was not engaging. A lot of it depends on what your picture is. So refer to Kelsey's call for some more information on, on boosts and ads. So also talk about the call to action on your Facebook page. Um, this is some on your like page. This is something that I recently did. So, and it's something that's new. When you go to your like page on Facebook through the computer, it'll say like call to action button. You can click like sign up, buy here, and like some other options. So I chose to have a sign up and I personally did not put my Beachbody site. And I also recommend that you don't do it. Because you don't want people just going and buying from you without building a relationship first. You want to talk to them. So mine is a sign up and takes them directly to a Google Doc form where they fill out their name, if they're working with a coach, if they've used any products, if they're interested in challenge groups or coaching, um, their phone number, their email, and how I can get a hold of them. And I've had four hits in the last two weeks from doing it, which in my opinion is a good number because... It's new people that I'm being introduced to. So if you haven't set up your call to action button, I would go and do that. Um, maybe put a little star to it and say, this is what I need to do today. All right, let's talk Instagram. You guys know how much I love my Instagram. Oh, whoa. Some Instagram facts. There are 300 million monthly active users on Instagram. 3 billion pictures get shared through Instagram. An average user spends 21 minutes a day on Instagram looking at pictures. 21 minutes looking at pictures. That is a lot of pictures to be seen. 
more than 75 daily users and 77.6 million users in the United States are on Instagram. So when you say, oh, Instagram's oversaturated, there's so many coaches on there, I'll never get anybody off of Instagram. There's 330,000 coaches, but there are 777.6 million users. You do the math because I'm going to tell you that you can use Instagram and then it can work. Instagram is my bread and butter. I love Instagram. It's probably how I found most of you. And yeah, I love it. So let's talk about some do's and don'ts. Some don'ts. Do not have your profile on private. Why? Because people can't find you. People cannot see your hashtags if your profile is on private. If you do not want people seeing your pictures of kids, do not post your pictures of kids on Instagram. If you do not want people seeing certain things on Instagram, don't post them. But if you have your profile on private, you might as well get off Instagram because you're never going to build from it. Do not have your Beachbody link in your bio. Why? It's spammy. It's salesy. And again, you're not building relationships if they go straight to your link. Do not have your bio empty. Again, you have less than 15 seconds to grasp somebody's attention. Your bio should be eye-catching. Do not use the word Beachbody in your bio. Unfortunately, there are Beachbody coaches out there that have given Beachbody a bad rap. Rep, rap. One of those words. So when you use the word beach body, people are going to be turned off. Do not, not use hashtags. So what I mean by that is do not post a picture and not put any hashtags. Again, you're wasting your time using Instagram if you're not using hashtags because guess what? No one's going to find you. And do not use stock photos. Instagram is basically a scrapbook of your life. So if you're using a stock photo, you look like some of those other companies that we do not like. And it's just, don't do it. So what do I want you to do instead? I want you to have your profile public. I want you to use your Facebook link in your bio. If you do not want people going directly to your main Facebook, use a Facebook like page. Uh, it's how I grab people from Instagram to Facebook. If somebody says, hey, I want some more information, I'm like, hey, no problem. Can you just message me on Facebook? My link's right in my bio. Make your bio pop. Go check out Top Coaches. Check out mine. Check out Lindsay Sessions. Check out Brittany Woods, um, Chelsea Pearson. I'm trying to think of other people that I follow. I can't think of other people that I follow. If you guys have any suggestions, put them in the chat box. Go check out their bios. Use emoticons. Make them pop. Make them awesome. Make them about you. Use your niche in them. Um, I've talked about bios and past team calls, so I'm not going to go in depth. Use health or fitness coach instead of Beachbody because that's exactly what we are. We are health and fitness coaches. Use hashtags and use your own photos. Again, yeah, use your own photos. So let's talk hashtags. You can use up to 30 hashtags in a picture. Um, on average, people use about 15 to 16 is the norm. As of right now, I'm going to keep using 30 because that's 30 hashtags that can get people's attention. Do not make up your own hashtags like hashtag, did you get your sweat on? Hashtag, I'm on my team call. Hashtag, I want to go out. Hashtag, thanks Shanti for the burpees. Why? People aren't going to find them. You're just like making up your own jargon and your own language and you're wasting a hashtag. If you don't use hashtags, people cannot find you. If your profile is on private, no one can look up your hashtags. So again, if your profile is on private, again, you're just wasting your time being on Instagram and trying to build because you're not going to get anywhere. Use hashtags besides fitness, even if your picture is a fitness picture. So for example, when I post a fitness picture, I will use hashtag Rochester, hashtag Dachshunds, hashtag Erin Condren, endometriosis, PCOS. That is my niche. That is who I am. So I'm going to use that because people that search Dachshunds or Rochester, guess what's going to pop up? Me. And then they may come look at my pictures. Use different hashtags. So you can use soccer mom, stay at home mom, working mom, army wife, marine wife. Literally, the sky is the limit. Change them up. Don't always use the same ones. Just change them up every now and then. And avoid using popular ones. So if you use hashtag fitness, guess what? Hashtag fitness is gone and your picture was buried in 5.2 seconds because 30 other hundred people just use hashtag fitness. Use them to describe your picture. So if you're taking a sweaty selfie outside, use hashtag nature, hashtag outdoors, hashtag sunshine. Get creative. Really, the sky is the limit when it comes to hashtags. And the way that the Instagram app now is, when you go straight to it, it will give you like popular hashtags right now. You can use those. Post your hashtags immediately after posting your picture. It used to be that you could delete your hashtags and use new ones. It doesn't matter if you do that anymore because your picture is going to get thrown into the mix. So if you posted 18 hours ago and you just put your hashtags on, guess what? 
your photo is now 18 hours ago buried in those hashtags. So what I would recommend is save your hashtags to a notepad so you can just copy and paste them right away as soon as you post. Um, an app that can give you popular hashtags to use or ones that are good right now is called Tags for Likes and you can literally just copy and paste it straight to your picture. Relationships. So I know you guys ask me so often, like, how are you building relationships on Instagram? I hate to break the news. There's no magic. There's no secret tip. Um, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of consistency and it takes a lot of studying on how you're going to do it. So what I do is I don't send direct messages on Instagram. The reason being is people send me a direct message and two weeks later, I'm like, crap, I have a direct message. Guess what? That person has moved on and they have forgotten about me. So I do not do it. So what I do is I will literally like somebody's picture. I'll like four or five of them. I'll comment on some of them. I do not say nice photo, way to go, awesome job, great info, love the pic. I hate when I get those. And most of the time it's like, hey, great pic. I'm like, hey, it's a video, thanks. I comment, I'm genuine, like, hey girl, you are rocking it, you are doing a great job. And I'll follow them. And then we'll go back and forth. That is how I met Lindsay Sessions. Lindsay Sessions and I met on the Instagram two years ago. I don't even know what hashtag. Um, Time Hop brought it up for me the other day where she had commented on one of my pictures. Somehow we brought it off Instagram, we went on Facebook, we became friends on Facebook, and now she's one of the top coaches on the team. So that is literally what I do. If that doesn't work for you, that's cool. You're gonna have to find your own method, but you have to be authentic. You cannot be spam spammy, you cannot be salesy. Don't comment on someone's picture and be like, hey, I love your post, do you wanna join my challenge group? We get that from coaches ourselves. Don't be that coach. Yeah, it may take a couple going back and forth and commenting, Write their names down, save them to your phone, save them on a notepad, on your binder or something. It takes time, but it's worth it. And if you go back and forth, you'll be like, hey, let's connect on Facebook. Like, I'd love to chat with you more. Or after you've connected, be like, hey, I've got a health and fitness group. Do you want to join me? Like, I think you'd be great at it and you're already super engaging. Like, I think you would really add to the group. I do not invite people to my free challenge groups after I've gone back and forth with them a couple times. I just don't do it. Um, and how to build relationships. Okay, I just wanna make sure I was not right on track. And then the other thing that I wanna add real quick too um, is that when you're doing your pictures, it should probably be about 80% genuine posts, 20% inviting them to something. You don't wanna do buy me, buy me, buy me, buy here. You can slip it into your post. So you can talk about doing the 21 day fix and be like, Hey, only four more days left to join my challenge group. Message me for more info. About once a week, I will do a now hiring post. Yeah, I'm probably going to lose a couple followers, but usually I gain at least one or two people that are interested in joining our team. Um, so have a good balance of salesy posts and non-salesy posts. And when you do have salesy posts, make sure they're not super salesy, if you know what I mean. Sorry, I need a sip of water. All right. How to build relationships on Facebook. Um, I am very active in certain groups. So I am very active in Aaron Condren groups. I'm a planner nerd, heart to heart. I will admit it. I will throw my right hand up and say that that is who I am. I am proud of it. I am in Dachshund groups. I am also in PCOS groups. I am not spammy. I do not buy, I do not say like buy me, sell me, like all that fun stuff. I am just very active in these groups. I have coaches that have joined my team from Aaron Condren groups. Not because I ever mentioned Beachbody, but because I'm active and they get to know me and then we become friends. Um, I heard one great tip on a call. I'm in a dachshund group. I don't post a post very often, but she said that sometimes she'll, I think she said she had like a corgi or something, but she'll post a picture of her dog and have like a Shakeology cup in the background. So it's like there, but it's not there. And maybe somebody will ask about it. You have to be in these Facebook groups, but you have to be engaging. You can't just sit there on the sidelines or like randomly request people to be your friends without ever building relationships with them. You get to meet new people by being in Facebook groups and you get to build new relationships. That's how you build a new, and that's supposed to say warm, cool market. Um, if you are consistently doing this, you will have new relationships going on and you're get to, and you need to get to know them before you bring up Beachbody. So Taylor just joined um, our team recently. I've known Taylor for the last like four or five months and she's another Etsy seller and we have a solid relationship outside of Beachbody. I never even invited her to join my team. She literally messaged me one night and was like, hey, what's your coach ID? I'm like, all right, here it is. She's like, oh, I just joined your team. I'm like, oh, cool. Welcome to the team. So you have to get to know people ahead of time. Yes, building relationships takes time, but this business also takes time. You have to build relationships 
before you just can be like, hey, join my team or hey, do this. If you are sending out cold messages to invite your team, that's okay, but be genuine about it. So if I send out a message for somebody being like about inviting them to a sneak peek, I'm like, hey, how are you doing? Like, I saw you went for a run the other day. Great job. Like, I'm so jealous that you get to run. I also thought of you. I think you would be an amazing health and fitness coach. And I think you would just like really add to it. And I would love it if you want to check out our sneak peek. If not, totally cool. So I am being engaging with them. I am complimenting on them something. And I'm also personally inviting them and letting them know that I think they would make an amazing coach. Those are my tidbits on building relationships. Sorry, I don't have any secret sauce on it, but that's how I do it. It takes time. You will not grow overnight. It takes time and consistency. Ignore the numbers. Who cares how many followers you have or how many likes you get? I used to get so hung up on this. I have 19,000 followers on Instagram, and there's sometimes I only get 78 likes on a picture. Well, guess what? Guess what? Those 78 people are people that are following me and that are actively engaging in my posts. Social media is a skill. You have to learn it. You have to study it. You have to watch trainings on it. it you have to be willing to make mistakes and be awkward. You'll make mistakes. Your posts will be spam spammy. They'll be salesy. They won't grasp people's attention, but it's going to take time and you have to have rhino skin. Haters are going to hate. You're going to have people leave mean comments on it. Um, Victoria just had her ex or somebody like say something on her post the other day. And guess what? Everybody immediately jumped on him because she's doing what she needs to be doing and she's doing something better than him. Get rhino skin. Guess what? You're going to have it. I think I cried the first time someone said, hey, guess what? You're still fat on Instagram. I was like, hey, cool. Thanks. But guess what? I'm working on me and I'm probably doing more than they're doing. So tough skin. You got to get it. You got to make it happen. Let's talk about branding real quick. Um, there's only one of you. You have to let people know who you are. That's why sometimes, you know, I hear so often like, oh, it's oversaturated. There's so many coaches on Instagram. Yeah, but you're, there's only one of you. So you're going to attract somebody that doesn't, is not attracted to them. Don't be to try to be like somebody else. Roll with who you are. You're a dog person. Great. Share your dog. You're a cat person. Share your cat. I share my planner on my main one. Guess what? I'm a planner nerd. I'm going to be proud of it and I'm going to roll with it. People are going to connect with those that are real with them, those that are not fake. So if you're trying to be like every other coach out there, you're not being genuine, you're not being you, and people are going to know it. You have to be you. You have to post about your life. Know your strengths and go with them. So if you are an avid runner and that's something you're good at, post about that. If you are not good at running, don't post about it. Like Don't try to be somebody that you're not. Just know your strengths and run with it. Others will be attracted to you if you are authentic and real with them. I will post if I slip up, be like, hey, guess what? I'm eating some Froyo right now. Yeah, I'm a health and fitness coach, but I'm human and I'm addicted to ice cream. Like, true life right here. If I slip up and I don't work out for two weeks, I'm going to let my people know because guess what? I'm human. And every time I post about gaining weight or missing two weeks of a workout or eating really crappy, people are like, thank you for being real with me. Like, I appreciate it, and that's what inspires me. You have to be real. You have to be authentic. So I've got some call to actions for you guys. Uh, in the team page, after the call, I'm going to make a post, and I'm going to ask you to share one or two things that you learned from tonight's call. And then I want you to explain or let us know how you are going to implement these things that you learned right away. Social media is a must-have. You can't get around it. It's got to happen. You got to be doing it. Um, so I'm going to open up to questions now. I know that was a jam-packed call. Um, and I see the chat things going live. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to unmute yourself. Does anybody have anything to add about social media that I might have missed? Feel free to take yourselves off mute or raise your hand if you need me to take you off mute because I can't see everybody. And let's try not to be like super quiet because that's how our calls end so abruptly because we are super quiet. Um, so I guess I'll just start reading questions. Oh, somebody um, took their self soft mute. Thank you, Emily. Well, I was just going to add something because I posted a video on my personal sponsor page, but uh, in regards to Facebook posting and running, um, Melanie Metro talked about this, I think at Summit because I, I watched the training the other day. Um, that So if you have 200 friends, 
on Facebook at the exact moment that you're posting something and let's say of those or you have 200 friends total but only 20 of them are on at that time that you post something and then three of them like it Facebook's gonna be like that no one this isn't interesting and then no one else is gonna see it but if you posted something really engaging and so all 20 of the people or let's say 15 of the people that are on at that exact moment are liking and commenting then Facebook's like, wow, this is really useful. So I'm going to keep sharing it and more people and more people will keep seeing it. So that's why if you're, you don't want to post and run so that if they respond, then you can sort of get that discussion or comment back and forth going and then more people will end up seeing that and it'll stay around longer. So I, something about Facebook, I didn't know that I was going to share. So. Thanks, Sam. Um, Katrina, to answer your question about the Google Doc, if you just go to my like page, just click sign up and you'll go right to it and see what I have posted. I just had a question of what Emily just said. Does that, um, does that, is that on your personal page as well as your like page or um, just on the boost post? I'm not talking about boost at all. I'm talking about your personal page. Oh, just, and I would assume it would be your, I, so that's how the, I think that's how all the algorithm works. And I think we're ignoring boost because boosts I think are going to do, we're paying for that. So I'm assuming that's going to be different, but I'm just saying, when you post on your personal page. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it is both pages. There's like algorithms for everything, like Emily said. So if your post is sucky, nobody sees it. <laughs> also, I noticed something else on my like page um, this week where you get like a response rating. So like mine says, I have a 100% response rate and it tells you like your time to respond. Oh. It also like told me how to improve my response time. If you get messages like on your like page. Oh wow. Okay. Which it must have just updated like this week. So if you're not checking in on your messages, it's gonna be hard to have a good response time. I think that only shows up if you have a good response time. If you don't have a good response time, it doesn't show. Yeah, then mine must be good. I have seven minutes, so I apparently don't have a life. <laughs> it's okay. Mine's like one minute. I was like, man, I'm like way too connected. You're just to my probably phone. like twenty seconds. <laughs> Um, and Cara, Cara is on is mute, on. but she said, and I think I said this on the call, if someone um, comments on yours and you comment back, it'll reappear in newsfeed. Mm -hmm. That's why it's very important to make comments on people's replies. And it can even be like a thanks or a thumbs up or something. But on every post, you can literally hit reply now, which I really like. Anybody have any questions or anything to add about social media? Mm -hmm. Um, Ashley, I was, I was just thinking, yeah. um, I think you typically suggest posting four to five topics on your, or niches on your Instagram. Mm -hmm. Let's say for me, it might be, you know, like fitness, being a mom, nutrition, do it yourself, whatever. So, but now I'm kind of like thinking, would it be more beneficial if I just kind of stuck to just two things? I don't know. Because I, I, I when I scroll through people's page and it's very consistent, let's say they all, all of it's about like fitness, 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 and nutrition. And it's more like that magazine page look. Is that more eye-catching than random photos? Honestly, I think it depends. Like, so for me and mine, I just have like my PCOS and then I have like my Fabletics thing. Um, yeah, because your, yours is more limited. Yeah, I don't have a, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to put in mind like Aaron Condren freak and like dogma, but I will post about it. But you just, in your bio, it at least needs to be something that can grasp somebody's attention right away. You know what I mean? And if you have so many things listed, it may not grasp somebody's attention. Again, it's just trial and error. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just, it just depends on the person. Cara's messaging me all of her answers. Um, <laughs> He goes, think of your perfect customer and post to them. Think of you talking to them straight. Like, what would you, what would you want to say to them? So thank you, Cara. Just keep sending me your thoughts, Cara. <laughs> um, Megan, hold on. Let me find you. Let's get you. All right. You should be good now, Megan. Can you hear me? Yep. I can hear you. Yep, I can hear you. Okay. So, um, 
I have my personal Facebook page, and then I have um, I have another business um, before I got met all you guys, and so I have a like a work uh, Facebook page so that people will stay away from my personal page because I you know I get me in my personal page and then <laughs> I don't want people to see that. But now I didn't realize that there was such a thing as a like page mm -hmm. um, or what, what you were talking about. So now I'm worried about having three pages. I kind of like the personal aspect of the page that I have now for work. So how do I make that transition? Because they are definitely not the same. I'm not a public figure and I don't know that I can go in there and switch it to that. Is your one for work like you have to like log in or is it somebody that likes it and you're good to go? Um, I'm not sure what you just asked me. It's just like a regular Facebook page. It's just, I keep it more professional. It's okay. still fun, but I just keep it more professional. So you could always so just create always a like create page and just like post on post that. On that page. Page. I created, I created, I created like page. head over there. That's where all the posts will be now. now. So okay. I it all. So, yeah, I was just hoping I didn't have to do that because just. I mean, you, you know, can I mean, keep it the way it is now. You don't have to change. I don't know why. It just seems like. Business wise, it just seems like it's so much easier. Like you've got that link on there and all these other things that I don't necessarily have that access to. That's all. So that was just a quick question. The only difficulty you might have keeping it as a profile like that is I put it in the chat. There's a compliance issue with selling on personal pages. So you just kind of have to watch your posts. Because I have had a couple of friends that did it that same way that we're selling for other companies that had their profile shut down. Yeah, that happened a while back with some big coaches. Does anybody else have any other questions about social media or anything? You guys are always so quiet. Get you guys out of your shell one day. No. Does anybody have any questions in regard to the business or anything at all or anything that's coming up? before I let you guys go. All righty. Um, next week, Emily will be hosting our team call. I will be out of town um, about how to talk to people about Beachbody face-to-face, -face, which I think is something that we all need. And then the week after that, on the 27th, oh, look at all of you leaving before I even finish. Man, you guys don't want to stick around. Um, the week after that, I will be talking how to build residual income. Yes, I am going to talk about that evil M word, and I'm going to have stones thrown at me. So if you don't like money and you don't like talking about money, don't come to the call. If you like money and you like talking about money, come to the call. Yes, I still care about people, and yes, I still like to help people. Let me just throw a little disclaimer out there right now before I get stones thrown at me. So you guys have an amazing week. Um, let's try to be a little bit more active in the team page. You guys have been super, super quiet lately. It's like pulling teeth in there. Um, team cup, let's finish this month strong and I will see you guys all next Thursday.